It's one of the world's least talked about citizenship by investment programs, offering a second passport in as little as six months. And yet, I'm guessing almost none of you watching have even heard of this country's citizenship program. So today, I'm going to share with you the details of Egypt's citizenship by investment program. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. I'm the founder of Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you are treated best. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. So a second passport, great idea, especially in these times. A lot more people are coming to us looking for that second citizenship to protect themselves, whether they're looking to leave their country or whether they're just looking to have a plan B to keep in their back pocket, to keep in that safe at home. And while we often talk about Caribbean citizenship by investment or Malta or even Vanuatu or other programs occasionally, we've almost never talked about the programs in the Middle East. Jordan has a program, very expensive, actually had some takers, mostly from people in other parts of the Middle East and South Asia. But one country we've almost never discussed is Egypt. Now, uh, on its surface, most people watching this probably wouldn't want an Egyptian passport. As a travel document, it gets you into about 50 countries, either with visa-free or visa-on-arrival access. Most of those countries are in Africa. Ecuador is one, the trick being that you generally need to fly through somewhere else. And even transiting through some countries, such as in Europe, may be difficult with an Egyptian passport. It is not, I know Egyptians, it is not the world's easiest passport uh, to travel on, and that's an understatement. Probably the one big benefit that I see as a fan of Malaysia is that in normal times, Egyptians have a rather unique 90-day uh, visa-free access to Malaysia, generally reserved for Americans and Canadians and EU citizens. They are one of the, the worst passports that has that level of access to Malaysia. So certainly there are some countries in the world where Egyptians are welcome, but it's not a tax haven. Uh, it's not a great passport, but yet they have rolled out and they have refined their citizenship by investment program. This is probably not for your average person who is moving from Wisconsin, but there are some people you know, who might be interested in this. I have said that Cairo is a very interesting real estate market. Uh, I think that uh, with such low prices there, there is some potential for people who want a bit more adventurous investment. Doesn't mean you've got to be a citizen, uh, but let's go through the citizenship options so that you know what this program is all about and you can compare it to the others. Now, first things first, this program is a little bit different. It's a little bit more informal. You go to the Caribbean, you've got to hire a local agent. You've got to go through a whole series of, of processes and lots of paperwork. A little bit less bureaucracy in this one. You're going to pay $10,000 upfront fee to the government. That's going to cover most of what you need. And so you're going to need to hire a lawyer. You pay that fee upfront, and then you begin the process. It takes anywhere from six to nine months, which isn't exactly super fast if you look at you know, what the Caribbean countries are doing these days as they become more efficient programs. What is interesting about this is you can pay from a business, which other programs sometimes frown upon. You can even have someone else in your family uh, pay the bill for you, make the investment for you. So you have more flexibility. There are basically four different options. The first is a straight out donation to the Egyptian government. Not that attractive for most people, seeing that you, know, you don't necessarily need Egyptian citizenship to do other stuff in the country. It's a $250,000 donation. Now, if you compare that to Cambodia's informal, uh, you know, somewhat scantily used program, similar level of donation, similar level of investment, uh, you know, Cambodia, you're going to get more going from a non-citizen to a citizen. So, you know, similar passport, Egypt, not really competitive at the 250 level, especially not competitive, seeing that you can get, you know, versus Egypt's very tier C passport, you can get a tier B plus passport in the Caribbean for, you know, 60% less. So not that attractive. The second option is uh, half a million dollars in real estate. But while they don't have the approved real estate concept, you do need to buy something from the government. So that's kind of an interesting uh, approach that they're taking there. Half a million dollars in real estate from some kind of government source. You generally need to hold that for, I think it's five years, uh, but half a million dollars in real estate. If you want to start a company, certainly, you know, Cairo, big place, educated people. There are some problems with uh, the internet in some neighborhoods at times from, from what I'm told. Um, have been there, haven't had any problems. Uh, but if you wanted to start some kind of company, either locally, maybe an outsourcing company, you put in $400,000. You can own that company entirely yourself. You can start it up or you can invest in an existing company. You have to own at least 40%. So if you found a company that you wanted to invest $400,000 in and you could get that uh, decent you know, stake in the company, that could qualify you. And so there's some steps you'll need to go through to prove that. The last option is a bank deposit. You get to pick 
what tenure and what amount you want to do. So uh, 750,000 US dollar equivalent in Egyptian pounds means you got to hold the deposit, no interest for five years. $1 million, if you bump it up to $1 million, it goes down to three years. Uh, and what they do at the end is they return it to you. It has to be returned in Egyptian pounds. It can't come back in US dollars, can't come back in euros. Now, I remember going to Egypt uh, in, right after New Year's in 2017, flew in from Cyprus. And I believe it was a couple months earlier, the Egyptian pound had basically uh, fallen out of bed. They had retooled it, and, and so it had gone from like six to the dollar to something like 16 or 17. I was literally sitting in a nice hotel, having my shirts washed and, and cleaned and returned for like 30 cents, eating you know three course room service for like four or five dollars. It was really incredible. Very nice people, by the way. Um, so that pound is somewhat stabilized, and actually it has it has strengthened against the dollar a little bit uh, in in more recent times. Uh, that is certainly the risk that you're basically betting on the Egyptian pound uh, to get this citizenship. So overall, for most people watching, not a great travel document. I wouldn't mind spending a little bit of time there, but probably not a place that the average person is going to want to live, especially if you're coming from the U.S. or from Europe and you don't have a background in that part of the world. Uh, interesting place to visit for sure. Uh, not exactly any great tax benefits and not exactly an affordable program. I mean, if you look at what some other countries have done, I mean, this speaks to the fact that citizenship and residence programs are getting more expensive. People keep thinking, oh, you know, when's that cheaper program to come back? You know, the Comoros had a program in, in the, the African country, the Comoros, uh, you know, 40 some grand, basically, you know, you're done and you get a passport, basically the similar passport to, uh, to Egypt. And, um, you know, when's that going to come back? I don't know. I don't think countries really want to be in the business, uh, by and large, of, of $45,000 passports. Someone might do that, but when you look at other African countries, you know, Kenya, for example, uh, you know, others, they're still looking at, uh, I think it's Benin, still looking at a six-figure price tag. Um, and so, you know, this is becoming a more and more expensive industry. You are seeing more and more countries throw their hat in the ring. I'm not convinced they're going to have a lot of takers for this. Then again, I don't think anyone was convinced that Jordan was going to have a lot of takers and they have higher requirements even. So we'll have to see. Probably not a lot of people coming from California to get Egyptian passports, but it is a program you should be aware of. And you should at least be aware of it in the sense of, hey, the Caribbean citizens should be thinking, hey, donating 100 grand, 150 grand, you know, that's kind of expensive. Well, look at what the new entrants to the market are doing. They are charging more. And so I think that the Caribbean, in comparison to a lot of these new programs that come out, whether it's Egypt, whether it's Montenegro, which came and went, Moldova, what have you, still a great deal. The market's getting more expensive. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.